This is Come and See with Father Philip Hall, turning to and following Christ in the 21st century. Father Philip is parish priest at All Saints of Lincolnshire Orthodox Church in Lincoln, England. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. First of all, start off by reading Hebrews chapter 11, verses 9 and 10, and then 32 to 40, and then Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 25. You'll see in there, especially in Matthew, that you have a whole series of people leading up to Christ. And it's as if each one of them is pointing forward, they're saying, this is coming, this is coming, this is coming, not me but him, not me but him, this is coming, this is coming. And then you have in Hebrews, uh, St. Paul talking about all the things that the prophets and martyrs of the Old Testament were also looking forward to. They did wonderful and extraordinary things, but the fullness of the good news was not there yet. They still had something to which to look forward. And in Matthew you get these 14 generations and 14 generations and 14 generations. So 42 generations of people are mentioned and each of them is still looking forward to something that has not yet happened. And then suddenly Matthew changes tack. He stops at the genealogy and he then says, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. And suddenly it's as if the heavens have opened and we see everything change. No longer are we looking forward to something that's going to happen, but we're living in a time of something that is happening. We're not looking forward to something that's still to come, and we're not looking backwards at something that has already happened. What we're doing is we're living in the present reality of the Kingdom of God, as shown forth by the person himself of Jesus Christ, the God-Man. And Matthew talks about the birth of Jesus Christ taking place in this way. Now that is a wonderful thing. All the time we can think about the birth of Christ taking place day by day, hour by hour within us. Not something we need to look forward to and say one day this will be the way it is with me. One day we'll see the second coming. That's not so important. What is really important is allowing yourself to open up like that cave, like that stable, and allowing Christ to be born in you day by day, hour by hour, in this way. And what way is that? Well, on Christmas Day, we read in the different readings about shepherds and about wise men, magi. Let's think about the shepherds to begin with. So within me, I open myself up like a cave and allow Christ to be born within me. And first of all, I come to him directly as a person struggling maybe with faith, maybe fearful, maybe not understanding at all what is happening, but coming and looking at what is being born with me with simple faith and delight and then going back into the fields, changed and transformed into something new. Maybe I'm coming like the wise men. There they are using their reasoning power, their wisdom, their knowledge, their understanding. And I use my reasoning power, my wisdom, my knowledge, my understanding, limited though that is, also to come to Christ. And I come and I offer to him the best that I have. So I come in my simplicity and faith, and I come with my science, with my knowledge, with my reasoning, with the best that I have, and each of these I lay at his feet. As I witness him being born in the cave that is me, day by day. Of course, we may come for the Christ Mass, for the Feast of the Nativity, we must come in that way to his stable, to the manger, 
The manger itself tells us what Christ is for. He's there to be fed upon. We eat him. And therefore, if your Christmas time does not include a good dose of Holy Communion at the manger, at the cave, which is the church, then you have missed out on the great thing that is the feast itself. When Matthew is writing, what he is writing for was for you to understand the miracle of Holy Communion. It's as if when he opens up his book and he starts telling you, look, 42 generations of people looked forward to what you can have every Sunday. So come to the cave that is the cave of Christ. Come and stand before his manger. See what is there on the manger, which is the holy table in the church. Open your mouth and receive him using the simplicity of the shepherds, their pure faith coming towards him, using the reasoning power, the science and the intelligence and the wealth and the culture of the wise men and laying these before him also and receiving into yourself his body, his blood, allowing him to be born anew within you. So on Christmas Day when it comes, and every day for it will come, allow that to happen to yourself, and count it as a week wasted if you have not received communion, if you have not prepared yourself to come to that cave which is your church, to come to that manger which is the holy table, to come to that Christ in the body and blood of Christ and receive him and allow him to be born in you afresh day by day by day for the whole of the rest of your life while you prepare for his second coming. So may God bless you this Christmas time, this glorious feast of the Nativity in the flesh of our Lord and God and Saviour Jesus Christ. And may he himself prepare you for him to be born in you every day of your life. Amen. God bless you. Pray for me. Happy Christmas. Join us again next time for Come and See with Father Philip Hall, a listener-supported presentation of Ancient Faith Radio.